What's up, everyone? It's Ahaza Master here, and welcome to Game Builder Garage. Yes, I am back to do some gaming videos. Back to Ahaza Plays, since the character life plays have been taking over the channel. Now, the reason why I'm playing this game is because, in case you guys don't know, I've actually made some games in the past. Like, I made, like, the Finance of East World games, Mario and Animatronic Core, I'm working on Finance of Grace Silver Eyes, and then I heard about this game. Apparently, this game is supposed to help you get into programming on other complicated engines like Unity and Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna get into this, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna try to make my own games on this, so... Let's see, uh, free programming is not available yet, so... It's honestly a good thing because I don't know what to do, so we're gonna go to Interactive Lessons. Oh, cool. I'm playing as a little blue guy. Okay. I can't do anything, oh. Hey, it looks like you need some help. What's with the weird look? Oh yeah, talking dot. Kinda strange, got it. I should introduce myself. You can call me Bob. Glad that's out of the way. Hi, Bob. Let's just say I understand your frustration. You can't finish the, si the simple game, right? You can't jump by pressing B, so you can't reach the apple. But there's a good reason for all that. You see, the thing is, the game is still under construction. The way it is now, you'll never beat the game no matter how many times you try to jump. In situations like this, I like to say, don't get mad, get programming, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to do a deep dive into this game to wrap things up. We need to peek behind the curtain, so to speak. So, why don't we do that right now? Okay. You can press this. Okay, I press plus. Oh! My! Hi! Ooh! If it isn't our Bob, good to see it here. That must be the camera guy. Hey, ya, Bob! Ooh, hi Bob, boing! Welcome to the inside of the game, Haza! How do you know my name? Oh, no, it's because of my profile. So, you want to know about our friends here? These being are called Nodon? Nodon? These are all kinds of different Nodons living inside your Nintendo Switch console. If you call up Nodon on this here program screen, then connect them together. And pow, you're actually altering the game's programming. This place where we use Nodon to do programming has a nifty little name. It's called the Game Builder Garage. That is right. That little fragment of a game you played earlier was programmed in the Game Builder Garage. But let's get down to business. We'll use the Game Builder Garage to finish this game. Um, what's with the blank look, Haza? I'm confused. You're going to use programming to finish the building this game. It's not as daunting as it might sound. All we need to do is make it so pressing B let you jump. Let's see the out port on this button nodon. Okay. Just connect it to the jump port on the person nodon. Okay. Hey yo, I'm button nodon. I know exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna push the button like pow. I'm gonna I'm kind of the genius about stuff like this. Nice. Hi there, I'm a person, Nodon. Nice to meet you. You saw the little character on the game screen, right? I put that character there, and I helped it move around. Now, hold A and move the cursor with the left stick the way I show you, and we can make this connect. Okay? Like this? Hang on. Oh, okay, like that. And presto! We made it so pressing A, B makes the character jump. Now, we should be able to complete the game. Alright. Yay! He can jump! With the apple. Hurrah! You did it, great job. You got to finish building a game with a bit of programming. Well then, why don't we pop back to the programming screen, okay? What do you think? It's fun learning how to program a game, right? Well, it's, it's, it's complicated. Actually, I think you might have a real knack of the, for this, Haza, okay? How about it? You want to program some more games. If you do, then maybe you'd be interested in your new pal Bob's interactive lesson. 
Like, just now, you'd go through programming all kinds of games with me as your guide. And by the end, you'll have what you need to make your own game all by yourself. Consider this me as me and Bob's teacher. Welcome to Haza's Game Making School! Let's go! So, how about it? Do you feel like taking some of Bob's pay patent interactive lessons? Hell yeah! Perfect! In that case, I got an awesome bunch of games for you. Let's take a look. Alrighty, Bob. Ooh. We'll be making seven games in these interactive lessons. In the first lesson, we'll make Tag Showdown, which is just a simple game of tag. Next, we'll use some unique features of the Nintendo Switch console on in on a roll. Lesson three is the auto-scrolling blaster game, Alien Blaster. In the game, for the fourth lesson, we'll run, jump, and punch your, our way to the goal in Risky Run. The fifth lesson is a game called Mystery Room, and we'll be solving three-dimensional puzzles. Oh, okay. For the sixth lesson, we'll make a computer-controlled car race against in the White Knuckle Thrill Racer. And last but not least, in lesson seven, we'll make the 3D action game Super Person World. It'll be kind of like Super Mario 3D World. By learning to program games like the ones I just mentioned, you'll learn the skills to make your very own games. Okay then, I'll be waiting for your first lesson. Be sure to pay a visit. I, I've been the ever acknowledged Bob. See you later. Bye! Okay. Oh, hang on a second. My name's Alice. Hi, Alice. So, not Bob. He's not... He's the excitable one you already met. I look similar, but I'm Alice. How do you do? Please don't forget to call me Bob or anything like that. So Haza, you know how you got that game to work just now. Be honest, you don't really get what you what made it work, right? I mean that's totally fine. You've just want you just started with all the of the stuff. But you know if you're going to make your own game, you'll need to understand which mechanics do do what. That's why I've set some checkpoints to help you. Oh good. I like you to come to the checkpoints before lesson one. I'll be waiting. Okay, we're. Cool. Okay, so that must be the checkpoint. So let's go ahead and get the checkpoint. Make the person jump. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by, Haza. No problem. Just in case you forgot, I'm Alice. Okay. The blue one's Bob, and the pink one's Alice. And this is here a checkpoint. The idea here is to test whether you really know your programming stuff, and how do we test with a puzzle? Maybe this is a bit sudden, throwing a puzzle at you and expecting you to solve it. But let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, Game Maker Studio. The okay, God. I, I have something for you that I think will help. Your very own Alice Guide. This will give you further tips on how to use Nado to make games. Can you select here? It'll open the Alice Guide list. Your thing? Oh. Okay. Oh, so you're putting me to a test. Okay, let me your ears and I'll give you the basics of Game Builder Garage. The screen you're looking at is now called the game screen. And as the name suggests, this is where the game you've programmed will play out. Here, we have the person object. Try, try person B. Okay, we jumped. Person jumped. But what made the person jump exactly? Let me take you through it in the Game Builder Garage basics. Okay. Hey, babes! Oh, it's that programmer again. Hi! Hey, yo, hey, I remember you, Hazard, right? Yep, that's me. Looking forward to bashing some buttons with you. Thank you. So, here we at the program screen. This is where we'll be program our game, with the help of the Hosa Nodon. That's right, when it comes to programming, we're here to help peeps. Each Nodon has its own special function within the, a setup. Watching out for a... When a button gets pressed, we button node on have that covered. And as for us, okay, yeah. Basically, I have to put like, I have to drag that, the the button onto the jump. And I think it also does other features like it makes you like move forward, left, and action. The location of the person node on determines the location of the person on the game screen. For example, if you were to move me over to the right of the program screen, the person will appear over on the right side of the screen. Okay. So, right here. Ooh, I've moved. How do you think that looks on the game screen? Okay. 
Oh, you're over there. There you go. The person has moved over to the right. So take note, the program screen is the place where we position things that appear on the game screen. Like objects or characters. Okay. Another thing to know about the program screen is that you can scroll it to find more spaces. I disabled the scrolling before though. I thought it might have made things confusing. Now that scrolling is enabled, try moving to the pointer. Okay. Oh! There you go. Now you know to get around the program screen. Now try moving... Okay. How, 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 how does that work? Oh, wait. Oh, that's zooming in and zooming out. Oh. That's another way to zoom in or out. I thought it might be confusing if the screen was moving around here in my guide, so I disabled it. But I think this feature will really come in handy when you're building your own game. Okay, let's put the screen back to how it was before. Okay, all done. Back to the main topic. I wanted to tell you about how to make the person jump. If you remember pressing B made the person jump when you, we were on the game screen. Hey y'all, that was my doing. I'm connected to, to the button nodon, see? These lines here represent the connection. You linked them up a while back, right? Yeah, I'm watching out for anyone pressing B. I got you covered. Anyone presses B and I immediately send the signal to the person nodon via the connection. Thanks for handling that. To understand the signal, try thinking of a simple message that presses along the wire. Okay. Now, to pay attention to exactly which part of me is connected to the button node on, alright? You see where it says jump? Yes. When I get a sig single at my jump port, that's my cue to make the person jump on the screen. Oh! So this is kind of like learning how to use Unity. The button nodon's job is to keep watch for B pressing. And then B is pressed, that the, the button nodon sends a signal from its out. Oh, okay. Okay, so I think this is something you would expect to program on softwares like Unity or something. Okay. And touch this icon. Okay. Okay. Okay, I cleared it. Nothing. The person didn't jump. Oh! Okay, I, I just gotta reconnect. Yeah, no connection. Yeah, I already know. I already know how to connect to you now. Yes, I I'm on it. Boom! Oh, there it is. I'm getting a signal from the button node on again. Okay, so it should be able to make the person jump. Alright. Yay! He jumped! That's what makes programming fun. Hey Haza, you remember us, don't you? Yes. You'll be seeing a, a lot of us if you're going to build a, be building games. Yeah, I can hardly contain myself. Of course you can! Cool. Did you get the hang of Game Builder Studio Bases? Okay, yep, I, I believe so. Now, I think, we, I think we can get started a little bit of the lesson. Or maybe not. Okay, make the person jump. Okay, they're putting me to a test. Haza, welcome to the puzzle. Here, here's where I'll be putting you through your paces with some puzzles to make sure you've grasped the basics of Game Builder Garage. To clear the puzzle, you need to make the person collect the apple. How are you going to get it, I wonder? Oh, I, oh, I know what to do. Yes, I, I know what to do. Jeez. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, I know what to do. I have to connect the, the button to the jump. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And, uh, do. There we go. Okay. Yeah! That was easy. Checkpoint. An introduction all cleared. Awesome! Awesome. Looks like you definitely have the basis of the Game Builder Garage down. From now on, I'll be testing how well you know Game Builder Garage at Nodon. So between each lesson, I'll test you with some checkpoints. I'll also be adding things to my guide every now and then. That's Alice's guide to you. So if there's anything that's not clear, feel free to hit up Alice's guide. Now, there's nothing holding you back, so let's get to lesson one. Alright! 
There we go. Tag showdown. Let's get to my boy Bob. All right. Okay. Hey, Hava. Hey, Bob. So glad you made it. Welcome to the interactive lesson. Just in case you forgot, I'm Bob. Yes, I know you, Bob. And I can't wait to start working with you. Well, it's a day to remember because you're going to make a, your very first game. Tag showdown. Oh, this must be the sample video. Oh, it's like a fighting game. Excuse me, I'm drinking some water. Okay. Okay. In this game, a tagger will chase after a runner while dodging a torrent of rolling balls. Sounds fun already, right? And this thrilling game will be played out right here on the game screen. Of course, you can't play anything yet. I mean, you haven't even programmed the game yet. From now on, the programming that you do on the program screen will be reflected right here on the game screen. Without further ado, let's head over to the programming screen and start programming our game. Let's go, press- yep, let's do this! Oh my god, it's empty. Welcome to the programming screen. This is where you'll call up Nodon and program your game. First, let's get our player character up and running. For that, we'll need to call a person Nodon. Okay. Okay. Uh, characters? Uh, there's a car or UFO? Uh, we're going for the person that probably the dude wants me to get. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Cool. Well, nice to see you, Haza. Good to see you too, buddy. Now the programming starts. Yeah, great stuff. Time for me to step into the limelight, peeps. Okay, so what happened after we placed the person Nodon? Let's take a look at the game screen and find out. Okay. There's the guy. And here's our person on our blank, empty game screen. Putting the person Nodon on the program screen makes a person appear on the game screen. Clear enough, right? Next up, We'll want to be able to control our player character using the controller. Try moving the controller. Does it do anything? Uh, no it doesn't. And as you think the person isn't moving at all. Well yeah, because we need to program his controls. Okay. If you want him to move around with the, with the, with the left stick, then we'll need to call the stick node on. Yep, I already know. Oh, there we go. Input. Uh, stick movement. Uh, left and right. Okay, it's a 2D platformer. Got it. Stick Nodon. Hi there. You're Haza, right? Yep. I bet you can't wait to move that control stick around. I'm already moving it. We'll need to link up the stick Nodon's output. With the left stick. Okay, yes. I already know how that works. Uh, boom! Hey, Sticky. Time to do what you do best. Setting over the output from the control stick. Boing! Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Yay, we're moving! Cool. Bravo! Thank you. Now, with that covered, we can move on to something else. Wouldn't it be good if the character could jump? Yeah. Okay, first... Okay, uh... We have to move in here. Then, put input. Oh! Okay, we have multiple inputs, which is the B to jump. Button Nodon. Yo! Call me Button Nodon. I'm your button pressing buddy. Uh, oh god, I missed that dialogue. If buttons are getting bashed, I got it covered. Bop, bop, bop. Okay, over here you go. Then link it to the. Yep. Boom! If that button gets bashed, you can be sure I'll let you know. Thanks, bud. Alright. Yay! I programmed my little dude! Okay. Okay, guess what? You've cleared step one! Awesome! If the step we made it is possible to move to the person with the controller. In the next step, we'll get ready to build the level. For our first game of the tag. I don't mind saying I'm pretty excited about it. See you in the next step. Hey, we did it! Move char moving characters with the control stick. Alright. And it went into Alice's guide. Okay, let's go straight into step two. Welcome again. Let's get right back to the building our game of tag. But first, let's have a little look back at what you've programmed. Yep. 
Yep, I already programmed how to make him move and jump. Okay. We'll be making floors and walls, but first, we need to de decide where we're gonna put them the entire level. How about in this space up here? That should do. I'm glad that's settled. Now we need to make sure this area is shown on the game screen. But if we're going to do that, we'll need the help of the game screen node on. The game screen node on. Okay, game screen node on and camera. Game screen. Oh, hi! The game screen node on. Oh, and you must be Haza. Everyone's saying you're the next big thing. Oh, I am. With you at helm, this is going to be a simple, stunning production. We're, we're sure to rise to the ever every very top, darling. If we make use of the game screen node on, we can determine which part of the program screen will be reflected on the game screen. I couldn't have put it better myself. Whatever I frame will appear vitally and thrillingly on the game screen. Okay, let's make this game screen node on a little bit bigger. Okay, I have to press this little size button. Oh, how big can it get? Oh, oh, it needs to be the correct size. Now, let's look at the game. Okay. Oh, I think you know that our player character is, is nowhere to be seen. Oh, it's because we moved the camera a little bit up. Okay. Okay, okay, let's move. Let's move these two up here. Wonderful. Be sure to get on my good side. Alright, let's see. Ah. <laughs> Look, now we've seen the person reflected on the game screen. Yeah, but he fell. Yikes, but not for long. Uh, but anyhow, now we know that whatever is surrounded by the game screen, now back to the program screen we go. But we're not in great shape if our player character can't stay on screen. Well, yeah, because we're high up. We need a floor. We will, of course, need an object node on to make the floor. Okay. Uh, simple objects. Box. Oh, hi there. Object no Don. I guess that, that that's the guy who who is responsible for the object. True to their name, object no Don are no Don that makes objects appear on the game screen. Well, he's not wrong. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Bye. Well, did you see that? Oh, sorry. I shouldn't mention. With nothing to keep the object just on the right screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, setting screen. The, se the setting screen is where you can keep, make all kinds of chant. Okay. We'll need to adjust the property settings to fix it so the object doesn't fall anymore. Okay. Now, disable the options movable, destruction, and destructive. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, boom. Visible and solid. That's what we that's what we need, right? Yay! Whee! Yeah! Wah! The person isn't falling out of the screen. Well he did just now because I moved him. So I'm not sure that the floor is big enough. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we can make it wider. Boom! Perfect. I made my uh oh. Oh, he's gone! Though no, the floor is, is, is. Yeah. Yeah, I need to build a wall. Okay, I guess that's where the texture part comes in. Choose your color, auto. Here's where you'll be able to select the color of your object. Let's make it brown. Okay. Yay! My own floor! Brown floor! Well, the floor is taken care of. But if the character goes past the edge, they'll fall again. Yeah, like, wee. Yeah, that happened. Perhaps some walls would make this a little safer. Okay, yeah, we gotta, we gotta make some walls. Yes. I think I know what to do from there. Wait, oh, oh, I can, oh, I can copy. Boom. That can be a wall, no problem. Okay. Okay. Okay, so like this. Okay, and I gotta move them over here. Boom. Ta-da! Now we got walls. Alright, let's see. 
Whoa! No clipping at all! This is nice! No need to worry about our player and falling into the abyss anymore. Cool. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, yes. I hear. I hereby declare step two completed! Good job, darling. Thank you, thank you! In this step, we add a floor and some walls. In the next step, we'll add some platforms to complete the level. Bye for now! Thank you. Step two is complete! And we, and we got a few Alice guide upgrades. Alright, so so step three will be making platforms, but we'll save that for another episode. So yeah, that'll be it for Game Builder Garage. I'm actually liking this. This is actually a perfect game for, for people who want to make their own games to practice, to use something like Unity or Unreal Engine or Click Team Fusion. Like, I mean, this is my personal opinion. I actually do like this a lot. I'm, I'm gonna... If you want me to do more videos of these, let me know, and I'll definitely do more of these videos. But for now, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Click on that notification bell so you won't have to miss any videos in the near future. And I'll see you all in the next episode. I'll talk to y'all. Woo!